One of the main functions of the air traffic control system is to prevent collisions between aircraft, and controllers have a number of tools available to help maintain separation between aircraft. One of the most useful of those tools is altitude separation. My name is Kyle Warner. We are going to talk about what altitude separation is and how to apply it correctly today on ATCAST. Dan Lindsay joins me today in the radar lab. Dan? Thanks, Kyle. We're going to talk about what altitude separation is, look at the rules for applying it, and see some examples of what it looks like here in the radar lab. There are some different rules and procedures for aircraft operating in the en route radar environment, but for the purposes of this episode, we're going to focus on the rules that pertain to Academy Approach. We will also look at strictly using mode C for altitude separation. So let's start out by talking about what altitude separation is. The Pilot Controller Glossary defines vertical separation simply as separation established by assignment of different altitudes or flight levels. It sounds pretty simple, but as we'll see later, this is a tricky concept. There are a number of rules that go along with using this kind of separation, which are laid out in the 7110.65 in Chapter 5, Section 5. Paragraph 5a discusses the basic prerequisite for using this kind of separation. It says, Assign altitudes to aircraft, provided valid mode C altitude information is monitored, and the applicable separation minima is maintained at all times. This is saying that in order to apply mode C altitude separation, the aircraft in question must be sending valid mode C data. How do you know if it's accurate? Chapter 5, Section 2, Paragraph 17a provides the answer. Consider an altitude readout accurate when it varies less than 300 feet from the pilot reported altitude. There are some other methods for validating mode C altitude information, but this one is the most basic and is what you'll be most concerned with in class. It's very important to note that the mode C altitude must differ by less than 300 feet. If it varies by 299 feet, it's valid, but if it varies by 300 or even 301 feet, it cannot be used. Pilots are supposed to report their altitude when they check in on your frequency for the first time. If they do not, you must ask them by saying, say altitude. What do you do if the information is not valid? Paragraph 17b says, when unable to validate the readout, do not use mode C altitude information for separation. Basically, if an aircraft is providing an invalid mode C altitude, you cannot use that mode C information to apply separation between it or any other aircraft. One reason an altitude readout might be invalid is that the pilot may have the incorrect setting on his or her altimeter. If there is a discrepancy between the mode C and pilot reported altitude, the 7110 requires that you have the pilot make sure the correct altimeter is entered by saying, the location of the reporting station, such as academy, altimeter, and then the appropriate altimeter setting, verify altitude. If this does not resolve the discrepancy, you must have the pilot turn off their mode C altitude reporting by saying, Stop altitude squawk. Altitude differs by, and then the number of feet, followed by the word feet. We should probably take a look at what mode C means. Most aircraft have what's called a transponder, which uses number codes that can be assigned by air traffic control and entered into the transponder by the pilot to provide identification on ATC radar displays. Modern transponders have another function called mode C, which reports the aircraft's MSL altitude as well. This altitude is shown on the controller's radar display next to the target. Mode C operates independently of the other transponder functions. So regardless of whatever code the aircraft is squawking, its mode C altitude will still be sent as long as the altitude reporting function of the transponder is enabled. Coming up next, we'll look at the rule for applying altitude separation and what it means. What transponder mode reports altitude to air traffic control radar systems? A, mode A, B, mode 3A, C, mode C, or D, mode S. The answer is C. Mode C is the function that reports altitude. By how much can a mode C altitude differ from the pilot reported altitude and still be considered valid? 
A, less than 300 feet, B, 300 feet or less, C, less than 200 feet, D, 200 feet or less. The answer is A. The pilot reported altitude must differ by less than 300 feet in order to be considered valid. Now for the primary rule governing the application of vertical separation. Let's return to Chapter 5, Section 5 and look at Paragraph 5b. Assign an altitude to an aircraft after the aircraft previously at that altitude has been issued a climb or descent clearance and is observed with mode C or reports leaving the altitude. This is more difficult to understand than you might think. From what it says here, it sounds like the 7110 is saying that the only time you can issue an altitude to an aircraft is if no other aircraft in your sector is already at that altitude. But remember what paragraph 5a said earlier. Assign altitudes to aircraft, provided the applicable separation minima is maintained at all times. So as long as at least one other type of separation is maintained, such as three miles of lateral separation, you can descend or climb aircraft to the same altitude. Now for the really hard part. When do you have to abide by the rule in paragraph 5b? The answer is that it is often a judgment call. That being the case, I can't tell you when to apply the rule and when not to. There are simply too many situations to cover them all. The overriding rule you must know as a controller is that you shall assure separation between aircraft at all times. That means that whenever you issue a climb or descent, you must assure that some kind of separation will exist when the aircraft reaches its new altitude. If you can't, then you must maintain vertical separation. As a side note, if aircraft are descending to the same altitude and are 1,000 feet apart during the descent, that does not count as vertical separation. Vertical separation cannot be applied to aircraft in a descent. It only applies to their final altitudes. I know this might be confusing, but hopefully some examples from the radar lab will help clarify things. These two aircraft are on a downwind to Academy Airport. The leading aircraft is at 10,000, and the trailing aircraft is at 11,000. They're currently six miles in trail and at the same speed. There's 1,000 feet and six miles between the airplanes, so as of right now, they are separated. You eventually need to get them to 3,000 for their turn to intercept the localizer course. Can you send both planes to 3,000 at the same time? Well, maybe. If both aircraft will reach 3,000 and still be more than three miles apart, then you can. But aircraft will pick up speed in a descent, so these two aircraft may no longer be six miles apart when they reach 3,000. Also, what if the trailing aircraft descends at a faster rate than the leading aircraft? Or what if the lead aircraft is a heavy instead of a large, and you need to maintain five miles between it and the trailing aircraft for weight turbulence separation? Altitude separation takes the guesswork out of this scenario. When applying the rule from paragraph 5b, issue a descent to 3,000 for the leading aircraft. As soon as you observe it leaving, say, 7,000, issue a descent to 7,000 to the trailing aircraft. You can use whatever altitudes you want for the trailing aircraft as long as you issue the altitude that the leading aircraft just left. In this case, you should end up with the lead aircraft at 3,000 and the trailing aircraft at 4,000. It's kind of like a set of stairs. As you step down the lead aircraft, take the trailing aircraft to the step that the lead aircraft just left, but try to avoid an excessive number of altitude changes. Here's another common situation. You have an aircraft arriving at James Airport, an uncontrolled field. Another aircraft wishes to depart and has already received a clearance from you, so you have to put the arrival in holding. What altitude should you issue for holding? Well, what altitude did you issue to the departing aircraft during the clearance? If it was 3,000, then the arriving aircraft should hold at 4,000 or higher. This way, you ensure separation by eliminating the chance that the departing aircraft might climb through the altitude of the one in holding. Let's say you're getting pretty busy with arrivals to Academy Airport and are using a box pattern like this one to organize your arrival sequence. If you take arrivals from one gate, such as Killer, to 10,000 and arrivals from Atoka to 11,000, then you don't have to worry about separation once they reach this point. Likewise, if North uses 3,000 for its arrivals to Academy and South uses 4,000, aircraft will stay separated if one controller forgets to turn an aircraft onto final. 
Here is a very common situation involving departures from Academy Airport. Aircraft departing from Academy will automatically climb to 5,000 per the departure procedures. You might think that because of this, you can descend arrivals to 6,000 when they turn onto the downwind. But aircraft are more fuel efficient and can go faster at higher altitudes. So as a general rule, it's best not to descend them below 10,000 until they are abeam the airport. Also, you want to get departures climbing and on their way to the gate as quickly as possible. So the rule of thumb is to keep aircraft on the downwind at 10,000 or higher and have departures climb to 9,000 until they are past any aircraft on the downwind course. This assures separation between departures and arrivals. These are just a few examples you might encounter. Whatever the situation, exercise good judgment and assure separation at all times. The key is to think ahead. What altitude did I just issue to that departure? And consequently, what is the lowest altitude I can use for arrivals? Do I have any overflights and what altitudes are they at? How will that affect the altitudes I can use for other traffic? Up next, we'll review the key concepts from this episode. According to the 7110.65, when may you issue a climb or descent to an aircraft? A, when you judge there will be no conflict between the aircraft. B, when the aircraft previously at that altitude is observed leaving or reports leaving the altitude. C, when it looks like it will miss other aircraft. D, when the pilot requests an altitude change. The correct answer is B. True or false? Aircraft can descend to the same altitude and remain separated as long as they are at least 1,000 feet apart during the descent. The answer is false. Vertical separation does not exist during a descent. It only applies to the final altitudes of the two aircraft. Now for a quick review. In order to use Mode C information to provide altitude separation, you must have two things. The aircraft must be sending Mode C data, and it must be valid. Mode C information is valid if it differs by less than 300 feet from the pilot reported altitude. If the information is not valid, have the pilot check their altimeter setting by saying, the location of the reporting station, such as Academy, altimeter, and then the appropriate altimeter, verify altitude. If this does not correct the problem, you must instruct the pilot to turn off their altitude reporting equipment by saying, stop altitude squawk. Altitude differs by, and the number of feet, and then the word feet. Chapter 5, Section 5, Paragraph 5B of the 7110.65 provides the rule for applying vertical separation. Assign an altitude to an aircraft after the aircraft previously at that altitude has been issued a climb or descent clearance and is observed using Mode C information or reports leaving the altitude. Think of the rule like a set of stairs. When you step down one aircraft, send the other aircraft to the step that the first aircraft just left. Application of this rule is often a judgment call. But the most important thing to understand is that as a controller, you must assure separation at all times. Aircraft can climb or descend to the same altitude as long as at least one other kind of separation, such as three miles of lateral separation, will exist. That's all from the Radar Lab. Kyle, back to you. Thanks, Dan. On behalf of UND Air Traffic Control, the Student Air Traffic Controller Association, and the Aerospace Network, thanks for watching. My name is Kyle Warner. Frequency change approved. Learn more about UND Air Traffic Control and watch more episodes of ATCAST by logging on to www.undsatka.org. Students may interactively test their knowledge by taking the ATCAST quizzes on SATCA's Easy LMS page. ATCAST can also be downloaded for free to your portable media device. Just search for ATCAST on iTunes U.